versus the 11 1 Lena. Very interesting there, the, the Io partners. This is something like an 86% win rate in 7.06 with Tusk Io. Only over seven games, mine. Mm -hmm. But uh, quite the, the success indeed with those two. He's got a haste rune, too. They can actually do quite a lot down here now. Let's see what Roger's plans are as he still sticks around, but of course it's going to hurt the XP that Crystallize desperately needs. He needs those levels on this Necro to, to have a chance to to, to live these sort of early attempts that Vega's tri lane is making. Yeah, and level two Tusk is going to make it a lot harder with that snowball. Yeah. He's got it now. They can start going for that committal very early on. As soon as Necro shows, they can probably just roll in on him and tether. And level two top lane, Tusk, Afterlife in a bit of trouble. Pops the mango. They can start able to jump back to safety. Very early on. As and soon as Necro is, shows, yeah, yeah, back they can probably just roll in on him and tether. Slayer. Heading forward, Crystallize still Perfect just level traps two. every time. Yeah, this man, he knows how to work with the, the updated version of the Shard Tusk. And he heals the Ghost Shroud level 2, plus the one so, every 200 HP. Easy. I guess in, with that, could they can they sort of get the kill in that situation if Slayer holds on to the Snowball until the Shroud comes out, or would they just not have enough damage? He was there, trying Brandon? to. It was, he, yeah. he tried to hold the Snowball to long. get the stun to be able yeah. to burst it down, but yeah, it just... 20 HP, Necro lives at 20 I mean, HP. The Crystallizers come back in, and yeah, they're just going to snowball straight under the tower. They know that he's low on the stick charges. He has one heal, but he's down. They just punish him immediately straight uh, straight again as he, he hangs around and very low. Top lane, Rogers come in, trying to hold back Afterlife as he comes in aggressively with the orb. Has got the save here from Zayak. Roger doesn't look like he's got the damage indeed to deal with the regen that this IO is kicking out. And he gets another bounty rune on the IO too. So IO making nice rotations toward top after leaving bottom. And look at the mid lane, G is, because of all the havoc that's happening oh, around the map, crazy. look how fast he is. He's 550 movement speed and he's dominating now versus Dendi. Oh my goodness. So they're doing a really good job of just pressuring to make sure that G goes crazy. Oh, right. G, ooh, quick with a sentry, double D ward, both actually getting knocked down at the end of that little bit of a ward battle in the mid. I'm loving this double rotation coming out from the two supports on Vega too. The Io and the Tusk just group mentality, moving together to go for those kills because of individual movements, they can't really kill people. They can just kind of help the lanes like this they threaten. The question is, can they get crystallized? Only has two one charges at the moment. He's only got four CS down here. I'm really surprised they're not helping him at all or putting anything else down here to pressure versus the Bristle. Because without having Heartstopper or at all, yeah. Bristle doesn't get harassed out. He's able to sustain quite well in the laning phase. Now, Raj, eyes on Slayer's movements. Lane's definitely going the way of Vega by quite a bit right now. Slayer, yeah, and hang around the mid lane. Maybe see if they can get a chance to, to go on to Dendi. But Dendi's playing it safe, just cleaning up some of the jungle camps, sticking away from that lane as... He's the supports off the map. But now Dendi just has, yeah, Dendi cannot lay in mid. Yeah, like G it's too is risky. so farmed because of the thirst stacks that he was getting from the aggression that's coming around the map. And then the tusk is off the map. So yeah. Lena, like we said, Lena in the laning phase can really get punished by that tusk. Up top, another bit of an attempt onto Afterlife, but he's been playing it very nicely as well. Constantly saving that all for the defensive potential. G toying around with the idea of rupturing G, but uh, sorry, rupt rupturing Roger. But it looks like, oh, they did have dust on Slayer. They don't really want to dive too deep. And... Oh, Roger. Spots out after all that smoke. They're going to know he's around and immediately. Great awareness there for Slayer. No hesitation. As and soon as that smoke out. disappears, he does put the dust. Yeah, Roger does get away. But uh, nice to see you know, Slayer. He's he's not sleeping. Ricky's, he's ready with that. Ricky's a very slow hero now after the, all the nerfs. So 285 movement speed with all those boots. Following around the tusk. They throw the scan, so Roger, or, uh, Slayer actually knows Roger was standing on top of him too. Yeah, Dust was still on cooldown unfortunately, maybe if it, yeah. it was there they could have gone for something with G, able to move over from the side. With that rupture, level 7 of course on this Bloodseeker, full level advantage over Dendi's Lena at the moment. As yeah, this, this Bloodseeker has just had this lane all to himself. Na'Vi, they will send Seneko over, but very little they can do without large oh. numbers to stop this, this Bloodseeker mid. The shards, that one actually looked like it should have pushed Crystallize in. Slayer's been having very nice ones. That was the only one that was unfortunate and doesn't grab the Necro into the tower. But now level 5 on Necro. The heals are starting to become a little bit more powerful. And he's getting some slight slight farm. You know, he's got a, a solid 13 creeps. <laughs> something. He's getting something <laughs> at least. I mean, And to be fair to Crystallize, he had a tough lane at the start of uh, game 1. And he made quite the recovery. Yeah. I mean, that was on a Sven. It's quite a different hero. Uh, but maybe, maybe you know, he's the kind of player that Na'Vi know that they, they sort of can, can let suffer at the start and uh, just trust in his ability to, 
to make the right movements, right calls in the mid game to come back into it. I mean, the poor guy was alone versus the tri lane, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that'll happen when you get trapped up once, your low armor hero. Necro's, Necro's power isn't the level one. It's once you get a couple levels in your Death Pulse and your Ghost Shroud with your wand saved up. He's got 14, 15 wand charges here. Are they going to be able to stun him and keep him locked down? Nope, sure. full heal. That is, I mean, I'm so glad that's hopefully not going to stay in the game for too much longer. <laughs> it's just crazy. That burst here. What can you oh. do? You have to walk away. Top lane indeed. They've got the silence. General. Trying to TP out, but the damage is He's substantial. Not Absolutely not indeed. Yeah, G. With those thirst stacks. Beats him down. Crystallize back to Fireman on this bottom lane. Stacking those one charges up. And that, that, it's got to be worrying when you when you see that sort of, you know, the, the fact now that you send three heroes down. Wand, go Shroud. You can't kill him. These three heroes just simply don't have the control as well to deal yeah. with him through the Ghost Shroud. Yeah, as we're saying from the draft, why Necro was such a good hero here. There's just not that magical burst. Yeah, not the magical burst, and oh. they will always feed him. He will pretty much always have 17 wand charges. Dendi now with an Invis rune. They are pinging him out, though. They know exactly where he is. They're, they're pinging right on top of him. They had a sentry in the, yeah, uh, did, yeah, in the side the of it there, so they yeah. did see him walk through that for a moment. Yeah, all in all, some, yeah, Vega, this game, having some uh, some good awareness of the movements, despite Navi having this Ricky and uh, the Invis rune and such on, on Dendi as a Slayer. And, of course, Zayak seems to be aware most of the time where Na'Vi are. Roger now up on the top lane, starting to bully back Afterlife. Afterlife does have the six, has the Dream Coil, so Na'Vi had to be careful how aggressive they get up top. Dream Coil into TPs could turn around the fight. Mm -hmm. Io's level four. They're yeah. starting to stack up Ancients, but... Oh, this is the combo that we were talking about. Less yeah. like Will was saying, Ricky is extremely good versus the Puck for this reason, and if you have a cog on top, the cogs on top of that, it's perfect. Mid lane, rupture into the eye shards. Very and nowhere for Soneko to run. Going to kill in return, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this this Ricky can set up a lot, and especially in uh, in tandem with the control that the clock has. Alo has to be a bit careful. He's dropping below half HP with another nuke or so. They should, he, the, he's actually in threat of the Reaper Scythe. Does have to be very careful about that. But the ancient stacks continue. Zayek has been, now they have his triple stack, so he's been do, doing a really good job of making sure they have that. And that's a really important thing for IOs to do when you're playing with Look the triple back. Slayer, he's, he's Rog. He's got the sentry down. He's going to pop that dust. And with G coming across, it should be a pretty free beat here for them, and indeed it does. They take down the Ricky, they get the kill. Slayer on point with the sentry placements. Quite a, f of a, quite a farmed Bloodseeker coming out. Level 10, oh, absolutely. Treads, Midas about to be picked up. Really Dendi, nice though, as well, you look at the net worth, and he's not that far behind, only 700. No. He's just been farming jungle. He's gotten Ancient Prowlers as yeah. well in the Ancients. The just, lovely. Yeah. just lovely. Just lovely. I mean, and this, is, this is what we saw, saw from Dendi in the last game, really. You know, he had this lane where... He wasn't able to find everything, but he's he's very good at sort of dipping and diving out of the lane, dodging potential ganks, keeping himself safe, and absolutely utilizing whatever half of the map he's on in, in terms of the jungle or the ancients, and just uh, keeping him in a good place in, in that way. We see Seneko slash Roger ward up the air. Not, they didn't block the ancients this time around, but they're warding for vision, so it looks like they want to take a fight around when Bristleback goes for that ancient stack. Okay. Yeah, that would be a certainly good time to strike. G.O. Sentry. Oh, we'll get the D ward. I don't know if it quite clipped Roger. He was on the high ground when they placed it, so Rog. Looks like he's still undiscovered in this area. Zayek and Aloha does both fairly low. Roger, of course, are halfway through level five. Doesn't oh, he's gonna sap. Old. He's just gonna sap the experience from Ooh. these ancients. Ah, that will that push him quite close to the six. Yeah, and look how low this bristle's getting, but of course the IO having that healing salve as well to make sure that he's sustained. But clockwork rotating in as well. They get oh, the hook shot. Hook shot. Yeah, this is perfect. Smoke cloud is down. And you can see Zayek just being focused by Roger. They do have the Shrine, the shrine here. Though. The Tether is going to do a lot. And in fact, they just turn the Quill Sprays. Start to stack up. Crystallize turns up. Lord as he's trying to finish off General. General gets stream caught by Afterlife. He's on the high ground. Ice Pass there holding him back. General, can he survive this? Surely not. No, finally goes down. He can't get himself away from that. And indeed, just always a risk fighting around a Shrine, especially when it's a team with an IO, as you saw there. You just cannot kill 
IO plus you know, his tethered target by, an, by a shrine at this stage of the game. You just don't have the damage. Zayek may get punished for this, though. He's outside. He's going to try for relocate at home. He's oh. not going to make it. Roger jumps in, has the damage, and will pick up a nice bit of a freebie off the back of what was essentially a, a pretty bad trade for Na'Vi around that shrine. That's pretty large there for the, the Ricky. Pops up to level 6. Yeah. And that worth is pretty good, too. And you see, like, what we were talking about, too, Io, you're playing with Ricky, you have one armor, you get pretty owned whenever you get hit in the back by that hero. And, and just the, the the fact of knowing there's no relocate for the next 70 seconds, that's yeah. a, uh, a nice bit of a load off the back of Na'Vi. So Bristle has the Vanguard finished, more than likely building into the hood next since he's versus Alina and Necro. No, other, no real physical damage coming out from Na'Vi besides that Ricky. Dendi. He's going to get caught out here by the Snowball Slayer. Closing the gap, but General jumps forward. Has the hook shot, doesn't make the connection, but it does close the gap so he can get in. Pop down the cogs, drive by the space for Dendi to get out, Ooh, and he can. Very nice. Very nice save from General. We saw it a few times in Game 1 and Game 2, but the clock seems to be no different there. Getting in, getting out. This time he doesn't even lose his own life. Both of them stay alive, and at the dead end of the day, the Tusk is the one going down. Yeah. Now, there's something that we didn't touch on too much, is that Navi doesn't really have, like, Incredibly good right click and base hit his crystallized bottom getting manned up mid though afterlife doesn't have the orb up uses the coil to save him and bottom here we go ghost shroud is on cooldown getting engaged on again he has he's got the, the reaper side though it's not quite enough oh, he's oh. oh if that got the kill and the regen was there maybe he would have been able to live long enough for him and the Jakira to turn he it around but didn't indeed. wand actually I don't know if it was on maybe still on cooldown cooldown for a second he he might have surely been. must have spammed it at least once in that fight but. Yeah. And with the Bristle, there must have been many more stacks, but yeah, that was very close, though. A low dance, able to walk it off. Uh, and it's getting to the, the, the bit where it does get a bit scary, because obviously this Bristol, he's closing in on the hood. When that hood is there, suddenly that's not going to happen again. You're not going to be in a position where you, could, as a Reaper, uh, as, a, as, a, as a Necro, can step straight up with a Reaper's Scythe and get the kill. It's, yeah, yeah that's, that's the hood complete. So no longer the target. But uh, Crystallize is going to be able to turn two in these fights, even and low. So nico has been kind of quiet, but he's level level seven on Jakiro. Max Liquid Fire, he's he's ready to hit some towers. Yeah, mid lane, Roger. Keeping the eyes onto Afterlife. Afterlife, of course, this game, there's a Ricky, has to go for the four star first. Yeah. That's fine, on, yeah. even on a puck, it's whatever. Four stuffs. Like the best item versus Puck Slayer. Surprisingly, I mean, he's playing the five tusk because yep. you know, you're playing with an IO. IO can't really be played as that five so much. You want him to get a couple items at least before he starts to help with wards. So he's got no boots. So he's running around. Neither does the IO. No boot, no boot gaming on the supports. But continuing to farm up those ancient stacks. So IO will be very nicely, nicely done on the uh, experience factor. Level seven already. Yeah, solid timings here for Dendi. 15 minutes in. Bloodstone is done for him on, on the Lena. Yeah, that's well. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Farming the jungle, you know, 140 CS. Ah, he's Radiant's not been interrupted at all, really. Attack. No sort of uh, any any deep invasions coming out from Vega at this stage. Seneko's a happy man. He's Dyer's hitting the tower, tower with a liquid fire, and he gets it. Dyer's top tower now, the Wantans did come up to the top lane. Roger had full eyes on the movement. Now they'll TP towards me. Looking to try and get the most out of this tier one defense. It's very low at the moment. A hook shot off the mark there. General tries to close in onto Afterlife. But he's unable to do so. Then he will get the tower denied. Top lane Sinecos hung around for a little too long. Oh, a dance. Chases him down with the quill sprays, takes him out. Bottom lane, G. He is going to try for this. Does have Tusk with him as well, and that is going to allow them to cancel the TP. Silenced up. There's no escape for that Reaper's Scythe. Necro. They are bullying Crystallize. And a career snap, though, by that's, Roger. Uh, that's a nice one. That's the, that's the four stuff down for three minutes for the puck. 5k gold lead already though for Vega. Now, Crystallize certainly being bullied this game. It's four deaths so far on the safe lane Necro. It's been a very tough start. I mean, as you said, you know, Na'Vi as a team haven't really been interested in helping him out. Yeah, he's been completely left alone when yep. I feel like he's one of their big win conditions in this game. Like, he wants to have, like, some farm and some levels in order to really be able to take the fights with his team. But that being said, bottom, Dendi gets the stun on Afterlife. The Laguna as well. Always close, but it's not, not enough. Afterlife tries to get out. Oh, okay, they still get it. But now Dendi's been smoked up. Can they find it? Stun. Down onto Bristol. Blood right there, forcing Na'Vi to split. 
Vegas should have a good chance of finding Roger. Can he play his way out of this one? Oh, he'll jump. But the snowball ends up connecting onto two. Wars Punch finishes off the Ricky. And Na'Vi, they're trying to man up here. Looking towards G. Dendi just pummels into him. Big oh, this is beautiful as well for Dendi and his Bloodstone. He gets a couple of kills. 15 charges now up for him. Aloha now is teasing around in the edge of the fight. Necro's coming. Io's coming too to help Aloha. Crystallize. Necro is there. Necro can really turn the tides of this one. Oh, and that fight's just given Dendi the gold as well to have a full Shadow Blade. A f what? Straight a up. One? Shadow Blade, 15 Bloodstone charges, Dendi. Okay. Silver Edge is going to be incredibly good this game, of course, versus yep. the Bristleback. This is the old school Lina that we used to see so much, right? When we saw every single game, the Bloodstone into Shadow Blade build that we were seeing. During what, the AC era, was it? Yeah, no, it's crazy. You know, if you can keep those fiery cell stacks up and uh, indeed you, you're going to be able to do so with the Bloodstone. Yeah, he's it's the just physical. so much right click. He's the physical damage yeah. dealer that they were, that they were uh, addressing for. That we we're saying a little bit. They're like, yeah, we don't, they don't really have like a great right clicker, but that's the Lena. Once you get the Silver Edge, etc. Later on, Daedalus, whatever you want to get, depending on the situations of the game. And we're going to see so this again bottom. And nice so he actually uses Dendic. Afterlife uses all of his mana, so he's adding to actually orb out of that fight, but either way he would probably end up paying with his life. And there is no rupture up for that fight. Roger makes them kind of commit onto him and they take a good fight. Up right top. now though. Back in the game, they found him out in the tree line. Yeah, they find afterlife. They pick him up with the combo we were talking about. Roger in general with the smoke under the cogs. I'll just see the end of this fight again. Then he just going absolutely ham there with the right clicks of lower dance. Not enough damage he can pop out. And in and fact, now, look Dendi, at this. He's going for a solo rush. He's going in with that double damage that he's picked up. Oh my goodness. And with the help of Roger, they're going to get this without any trouble at all. I don't think Vega expect this There's, to happen. No. How can you expect that, right? It's Alina. All right, Lena just roached, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Okay, and Dendi, I mean, he is selling at his top of the net worth. Dendi is crushing it today. Look at him go. He's on form. 178 CS, Force 0 and 0. 19 minutes, level 16 Lina. He's back. Bottom lane. Hello, Adult starting to push in. Vega already behind him, but this TP's coming into the shrine. Navi. What's he gonna build on the bristle? Oh, Whoa. Roger gets dusted up. He's got the ult though, he can buy time for the rest of Na'Vi to come in and maybe take this fight. Ice Path's not gonna connect. War Sponge to try and hold back General. General still has the hook shot if he wants to get nice and deep. And there he the goes, IO. straight in onto the IO. Crystallizes there, pops down the Reaper Scythe. That's gonna be the IO down for 40. Blood Bright, not gonna make the connection. Crystallize has been ruptured. Can Na'Vi keep him alive? Ice Path trying to hold back a low hard arts. Roger moving forward. They kinda need Dendi for this. Or well, maybe they don't. I mean, Roger, he just jumps forward. He takes down the Tusk. Looks like they don't need Dendi. Dendi at the moment on the top half of the map. Na'Vi are doing this one just as a four-man. Vega shouldn't. They should don't want to fight here. The Radiance is about to be finished on the Bloodseeker. Bristleback has 4,000 gold in his, in oh, his inventory, too. Like, they have to be able to... If they want to yeah. take fights like that, they want to spend their gold. Because it's pretty much like they're playing at a deficit now. But why? Yeah, why did he go into that fight with that much not spent? That was... Come on, Lord, don't spend that money. Well, it wasn't It wasn't started as a fight, right? They were sure, like, oh, it's it was, a Ricky. They try to yeah, get the dust, and push, then... Yeah. yeah, the fight kind of turns. Yeah. But Crystallize gets a Reaper's kill. He does. Woohoo! He gets that kill he's been waiting for. And look at that, like we were talking about. 17 wand charges all the time. Yep. And there's the Beautiful. purchases as well that you were mentioning finally being done. Both the Radiance and the full SMY out for the Bristol and the Bloodseeker. But oh mid lane afterlife. I'll tell you what, he's been king. He is having a tough game on this puck. Na'Vi doing a great job of catching him out. 16 Bloodstone charges now on Dendi. He's got the boots to travel complete. Tough series for him, to be honest. The last yes. game, too, when he was playing the Nation's Prophet, he, he kept like, going into the fights and dying really early. So struggling a bit versus Na'Vi. And you said it as well. Once that Silver Edge is there on Dendi, it's, these fights are going to be so hard. Bottom lane. lane. Snake, is this is fine. A little bit deep, but... He gets a tower. That's, he's, you, you can see worth. actually exactly what he's doing. Like we were saying, he has max liquid fire. He's just... D running directly at towers and just liquid firing, and they're gonna get the return kill on the IO at least. Tries for the TP out. Battery assault. No oh chance of that. Looks as Dendi. They're they're going aggressive here, Slayer. Oh, in some Dendi trouble go. here. Ooh, just the right. Gonna be chance to react. Oh no, there's not. Now can they get Aloha? That's a pretty tough target. They do have Reaper Scythe, but yeah, with the hood and search, there's no chance. In fact, Aloha. Too close to a shrine. He wants to come back and start and tease around with them, but with those fiery soul passive stacks, Dendi's so yes. damn speedy, especially with the boost to travel. No chance of catching out that Lena when he's running away from you like that. And Dendi, straight out. 
Just about 900 in the Silver Edge will be complete. 22 minutes in, still at the top of the net worth, Dandy. Level 18 as well, of course. He feels so, this is like such a good feeling as Alina, where he can literally, he's permanently 500 like, permanently speed hasted. because he has infinite mana. So he's always just throwing yeah. spells out from these Bloodstone charges. Now he is standing underneath a sentry. It would be a massive kill if they could get it, but as soon as he starts to, to float away, he's gone. And, Whoa, and now he knows Bristol the TP's are coming in. very alone bottom. Uh -oh. yeah. Aloha is all alone. The, the rest of the four members of Vega are over on their half of the map. The question is if they have the catch, General. Does he get the hook shot to the oh, that works, but it works. It absolutely <laughs> does. He still gets in range, gets the battery assault. Dendi actually picks off the IO as they're coming in. Look, Dendi's just saying, you can't come near him. He stands on the high ground, forcing the bat, pummeling into afterlife. Looks like Dendi finally will go down, but he's got the Aegis. Na'Vi, they're ready for more. Shards are there, but Roger quickly jumps over the igloo. Cloud is down to Slayer. They do have the shrine. Na'Vi will hold back. Na'Vi's... Well, I say they'll hold back. Dendi, he's ready to go up, potentially. They know that the shrine's already been popped after life. Ooh, does manage to juke out the stun. Ice Pop made the connection. Fight with the Reaper Slap. That holding him down is not enough damage, though. Jumps out. There's the Blood Bright with the Dream Coil. It's going to get the silence oh, out no. on all three. They'll Navi. take down Dendi. Necro trying for the TP out. Crystallized will escape, but the rest of Navi don't look to be as fortunate. So Nako's down. Vega striking back. Shards won't clip Roger. He'll get away. Very Navi getting a little too ahead of themselves. They're trying to fight up into the high ground like that. It was just a recipe for disaster. Being on those steps with Dream Coil, with Blood Right available, it's such a hard fight for you to take. And in fact, now Roger oh, could be in Roger trouble. Too. They've got the dust. They've got the vision. He'll try and run himself away, but the balls from the air are flying through. He has the ult to buy himself sometime, but he should certainly be going down as well. Vega. Midas is up. Oh, that's a pain. Oh, poor Roger. What happened there, though, I think I think it was a little bit of miscommunication. I think Crystallized thought that Laguna was up, yeah. because if that if they have instantly if burst the puck there. there, they can't Dream Coil, they can't set up the Blood Rite, and they're all able to kind of retreat. So that seemed like it was maybe a bit of miscommunication. Even though they did a very aggressive move, it just seemed like they had a different uh, idea of what would happen. Like Reaper Scythe plus Laguna would probably get it. And the puck kill. And with that, he can start to get some of that momentum back. I mean, now it's only a 1k gold lead for Na'Vi. Big gap being closed there off the back of that fight. Vega take the tower. In fact, a low hard answer. He's looking to move it on to Seneco. General's there. Will be Dream Coil, but Vega back off. They don't have the damage between those two to fight that Blade Melt cl uh, clock at all. Silver Edge complete for Dendi. Na'Vi up towards the top. Oh, Slayer. Pops the dust trying to get Ooh. Dendi there, but Dendi saw him for a second, backed away. They have been scanned out though. Vegan know that Navi are here. They've got a warden of sentry up there waiting for the Ricky. Roger still has the Midas up. Oh, Roger, come on. Seneco taunting Aloha and then TPing out. Oh, yeah, R Roger's now popped the pop yeah. the Midas. And then getting very deep wards. The beauty of playing as Ricky is you don't reveal yourself placing wards in deeper sides of the map. I think you're if you're, if you're Navi really, you, there's, there's no point trying to fight until Crystallize has his radius. Uh, sorry, his. his Radiance, and yeah. he's very close to it. That's yeah, he's relic gold. He's got good levels now yeah. too. Level 15. Once he gets level 18, that's like the big. Of course, you get the 0.9 damage uh, Reaper Scythe, which can be extremely nice because at least you have the veil to kind of, kind of counteract the hood. Roger, gonna get a courier snipe here. He's looking for it. Yep, and he's got it. Top lane. Dendi. Is that two or three career snipes from this game so far? At least two. That's a couple at least, yeah. Dendi, the reload's coming. Another dust pops yeah, out. He's gonna have to suicide. Got He's gotta kill himself. No. Yep. He does. He did it. He's out. He's gone. That's gonna be some of the bloodstone charges in the bin, but at least, yeah, stopping Vega getting the, the bounty of getting that kill on him. The chase down for General, though. Vega looking for more General with the clock. He's got no neutral to hook. Oh, now the neutral spawn. Is he gonna hook him? Oh, can he get himself out of that? He has been ruptured, though. Aww. Not necessarily the hook shot he wants to make, and indeed he can't. He can't go for it. Will be controlled. Vega, they're climbing their way back into this one, getting their lead. So it's feel quite certain as Na'Vi just throwing away a little too much now for these objectives. Yeah, sure that bottom tower that Snake could gets earlier, that's fine, but losing both Dendi and General for a tier two top, that is not the kind of trade that Na'Vi needs to be making. Aloha's got the full basher now too, and they're trying to go in. Silver Edge is up and online. He is big. He yeah, is the... booking it though. Silver Edge hit may make this. Dude, this look at Seneco. He's actually by himself the whole game. But here we go, top. They look like they're going to be able to get him here. They actually connect the stun. They connect the lagoon. The Reaper Scythe. There it is. That's a big one. 85 seconds, no Bristol and Radiance. But the, look at. I mean, Seneco is actually. Like, you look and you're like, 
he's zero and six, but he forced reaction bottom. He forced so many heroes to go down there that now this poor Bristleback gets left alone and even gets some damage on the tower because the liquid fire. So this is like, I remember like seeing this happen with um. Uh, 1437 when he was playing the Jakiro when it like when he first started first picking in every game Which he would die lanes. yeah he would yeah. just do eight click lanes and he'd be like all right I got 25 percent damage yeah. on this tower job done I forced TPs my team got a good fight so it's it's all about weighing how what you gain out of those kind of deaths and that's definitely worth it bristle dead ratings acquired. Oh, Roger that's a very low IO. Uh, he's also safe from behind the tower. BKB now done for uh, G. Mm -hmm. And building quite defensively as well. He's got the Lincoln Sphere queued up. Wants to make sure that he can stay alive for as long as possible in these fights with that Radiance. Oh, up top, Roger. Looking for the Aya pick off, and he gets it with the ult. Takes down Zayak. Got the snowball from Slayer. He's trying to fight back. Ooh, the jump across, though, means the Slayer can't catch Roger. In fact, Dendi's there. Dendi can look to try and turn and fight. Afterlife's in the neighborhood. Dendi needs to be a bit careful about how he goes around this, or maybe not. He just blows up the Tusk right in front of the faces of Afterlife and G, and they can't do anything to stop it. Dendi moves away, has been ruptured, but he's straight out with the TP and will get himself back out. Clean cut execution there for Na'Vi and Vega, uh, unable to punish it. Like I said, dude, uh, Dendi's, Dendi's cruising. They see G right now. He has the BKB. That's it's. That's and they get the ice one. path on him. They do. I mean, yeah, with the BKB, he is just gonna turn. I mean, at least they'll force out of the charge. Oh, Roger. Quick blink away. Crystallize. What's he up on this? We have a low hard dance in the neighborhood. That's still. Oh, you've got to be very careful about how you poke and prod. And Navi backing off. Dendi's there though. Just have the silver edge hit. Can he kind of? He can't find the stun. Hookshot still on cooldown, now he's back. But after life, jumps in with the two-man dream coil. Vega, they're ready to go. Blood right down. We'll clip onto both Crystallize and Roger. Ice Path and Snake are holding back a low hard dance. They really want to fight here, Vega. Na'Vi, they do though as well. General hookshots in onto Zayak and with the Laguna Blade that will blow the IO up. Na'Vi now try to move forward for more. Blood Bright's down. Roger to get himself out. Snake will be silent. Slight strike will be duked out by the snowball. The Slayer comes back in, but he's back into the clutches of Na'Vi. Roger jumps forward, takes down another. There'll be a buyback from Zayak trying to keep a low hard dance alive, but the Reaper oh, comes too much. Through. And that's a low hard ounce down for 85 seconds. Vega, they've got to run. Zai's going to be back up with a re relocate. Denny, maybe seeing if he can get some sort of a wraparound here onto G. He's sort of stuck on the high ground, General. He's got eyes on him, forces himself forward, has the cog block. Dendi, can he get in range for the light strike? Yes, he can. They've got the catch. They take down G as well. Art oh, alive. That was a buyback from the IO2 to try to take that yeah. engagement, but. You know, even when you have Hood, and even when you have, like, Tether Overcharge, the fact that Ghost Shroud gives amp Spell Amp and the Veil oh, gives Spell it's Amp, crazy. it's just like you, you still just get chunked down by the Reaper. That's why we were talking so much about how potent this hero can be versus Bristle, no matter what the case is. And again, I mean, Crystallize, you know, he, he had an absolute nightmare of a laning stage with how much Vega threw at him, but it's a Necro. At the end of the day, if he holds the target at the right time, it's, it's pretty game win. Yeah, it's and now Bristol gets forced to buy back. And Bristol was super close to that BKB in those last two engagements. And now Suneko's probably going to die and everyone else on oh, They do get a nice three-man dream call, but they have the follow up Denny's just turning and pummeling into a low hard dance, forcing the Bristol back. And with that play, a low hard dance wow. cannot chase to, to even get the Suneko. Suneko actually ends up walking out of a situation where he looked to sure be dead. I thought Suneko might die and the rest yeah. of them might get out, but here we go. We get to see the fight again here. Slayer gets taken out, and look at this. He's still, he's a little, yeah, but he's way below actually half health, so he actually, there's no way that he survives there like, by any means. There's way too much damage coming out, and I think he got Silver Edge broke, too. And Na'Vi back with the 7k gold lead now. 31 minutes in. Snaker on this bottom lane. He's actually still in the tree line. Whoa, 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 whoa. Snaker, don't show yourself. Oh, he man. wants to cut the wave. All right, okay. <laughs> He's going to get bashed, really, yeah. He's not getting out of that. All right, so, I mean, as you say, these very suicidal Jakiro plays. That one was a bit... That, was that a one is a bit... <laughs> I don't think he thought that two people were there. All right. <laughs> it's so funny seeing that, though, right? The winning team, and he's just like, 0-7. Whatever. Some crazy, crazy stuff. Dendi now, BKB. So he can feel a little more confident to just stand his ground in these fights, not have to worry about these these AOE silences really coming out and such. And he can just sit there on the front lines. In fact, he's looking towards mid lane, him and Roger. They need more for that. They need the Necro for the Bristle. They now have Crystallized too, so. But 
that doesn't really look like a great fight. Roger sees everybody there, and General's not in the area either. He's like the really good way of catching people. Full defusal finished up now on G. They're gonna actually be able to purge off that ghost shroud. Maybe get some chase kills with it too. But man, I don't think I've ever seen Sayoma this poor, right? On the like when he's playing, because normally he's playing the four, right? But this is a five tusk, so he's not able to get items. Fifteen hundred net worth. The IO is the one who needs to get all that gold to be able to do it. But he's also not really farming too well on the IO, having to buy back, dying multiple times. It's a rough, it's a rough IO game. Oh, it's at least. Some nice rookie play from Roger as well. I mean, not only is he very, very farmed, he's been getting some incredibly valuable information for Navi throughout the entirety of this game. And now, Navi. He's so high level on the Ricky. I mean, he got the, this Midas has been absolutely thirty percent experience talent, but that's yeah. a fifteen. He's like he's almost level twenty. He's yeah, nearly the same level as uh, the G Bloodseeker, and you know, G had a Midas as well. But yeah, that talent certainly helping out. He's twenty on G now. He's twenty one. Now into the pit. Navi go. Can Vega do anything to stop this? They have their ultimates available. They'll spot it out. They know what's going on. Cloud's there to stop Slayer from getting in with the shards or the snowball. Vega, do you have a lower dance on the front lines? They really do want to try and stop this, and in fact, Arthur jumps forward. Just get the Dream Call onto two, but they're still out of range of the Blood Ride. Denny pots the BKB, holds his ground. Mid lane getting team, focused. Trying to go hammer onto Crystallize. They'll snowball in. Crystallize heals himself back up. Io's there with the tether onto Slayer. Dendi's already been brought down. There's the Reaper Scythe. Navi will find one kill in return. Roger turns towards Slayer, gets another. Crystallize still alive in the midst of his all Ghost Shrouds, but he gets taken off by the Diffusal Blade. Vega hitting back incredibly hard here. Roger, can he survive? Is a nice hold from Snaker doing a lot of damage. General comes in with a hook shot. In fact, G, G's oh my got. Goodness. G can't get himself out of this. Aloha now still up, but he's getting kited around. Yule's up. They do lose the Ricky. Only two alive on both of these sides here. Afterlife and. Dendy's up soon. That could go back in. General, cogs in a couple of seconds for the control. Afterlife's up to the high ground. They do have a shrine here, Vega. General now being turned upon a bash would do wonders for a lot of dance, but he doesn't find it in the first couple of hits. Takes up the cogs, jump across them from Afterlife, but in fact with a blade mail, Afterlife's got to get himself out, throws down the orb. Rocket will connect, but Afterlife will keep himself alive. So very scrappy fight, both teams losing three members there. And the biggest difference being the fact that Aloha Dance doesn't go down at all. He does keep himself alive, but overall, Na'Vi's still the one's more confident. Straight back into the pit. And the question being whether Vega can actually go in for a round two before Na'Vi and Dendi can claim the Sages and Cheese. The shards from Sayoma there were like beautiful. Gets the rupture on Dendi. Dendi gets focused down. The yep. Bloodstone pop heals Crystallize. That's actually what initially uh, got the heal off on him. But that newly picked up Diffusal Blade from G. That able to burst difference. off the Ghost Shard. They yeah. can actually focus fire him through those... Uh, Whatever the heal is called now. Sadist, I guess we can still call it. The Sadist heal charges from the Death Pulse. There we go. Looks like Vega do want to go for round two. Yeah, Navi being very careful about how they go about this. Roshan is so low. Count about a fifth of his life. This is a big, big fight for Boti. They need to secure the Aegis. Who's going to go in first, though? Seneca with the high ground. Afterlife keeping the middle lane pushed in whilst this is all going on. Both teams having all ultimates available. Roger wants to start the fight. Oh, but he's, there's a sentry down. He's been bashed up. Does get the ult off. Slayer being brought down low. Zyde with the tether. There's General. Straining in the midst of it all with a hook shot. Gets two in the cogs, allowing Seneco to lay down the combo. Bringing Zyde down low. That's going to be the IO getting popped. G pops the BKB. Turns towards General. Navi, they're back in the pit. They get Aegis onto the hands of Dendi. And now General, he's playing around with them. Finally goes down on the clock, but jump four. Lacuna Blaze there from Dendi. Brings down the Bloodseeker. Nice Vega, shot. they've lost two. Roger being turned back upon by Aloha Dance. Has the vision, bashes him out. Will claim a second. Two for two, but Dendi continuing to chase. Silver Edge hits there onto the Bristle, but he doesn't have the control. Can't quite find the stun. Will pick off a casual courier on the way down. Looks towards Slayer. Slayer with the snowball. Dodges the last CS. Punches Dendi up. Can Slayer get out? He can't. Dragon Slave from Dendi is enough to secure the kill. Navi. They take the fight, they have got that Aegis in the hands of Dendi, who immediately bots his down to the bottom lane. Racks are exposed, pressure is on, G has the buyback. He commits it, looking to get back in and bold. Sticky Napalm onto Dendi, has the Lotus Orb on him from his teammates. BKB as well, Blood Rise not going to do much. Reaper Scythe nearly brings down Aloha, but he still survives. Zyx there with a the heal. Aloha's brought back Dendi, keeping confident, back up to the high ground. The heal's there from Crystallize, sustaining Na'Vi for this. They brought the melee racks down low, but they do have to respect the fact that Vega they have four. Navi just three here. Dendi got stunned by what the co coil broke because I think he had BKB active, or maybe he popped right after. Oh yeah, coil ags. Yep. 
Just making sure, because he well, he was trying to turn and get the Silver Edge hit onto the Bristleback, but wasn't able to get the Oh, and that Life Strike from the high ground afterlife. He didn't expect Na'Vi to still be around. He just gets straight up combo by Dendi. That's a gem too, down. And G has had to pop the BKB. In fact, Dendi could chase him down. Look at these right clicks from Alina. Really forcing G all the way back, even further down. The oh, ice path bad. connection onto two. Zayx gone. BKB from a low on us is popped. He's trying to get himself out here. The lifesteal helping him a little bit from the talent. Can he actually get out the cogs? It actually stops the Nacon Denny being able to chase him. So General kind of blocking the path for there, even if they were laid down. Maybe questionable if they could have actually caught him. As he's just a little too speedy with the uh, with the wall path. He chat wheeled the whoops, you know, he, he knows he made a mistake there with the cogs. It was a slight mistake, but they still are able to claim the racks and 16,000 gold lead for Na'Vi, forcing tons of buybacks. It's looking very good for them. They still have the cheese, they still have the Aegis, and Crystallize is very healthy. And look at this. Look at this. Diving in deep, General straight up spots G out, goes in with the hook shot, and that's G gone for 90 seconds. No buyback available on this Bloodseeker. Aloha Dance doing his best to try and... Keep General and Dendi away. Only a little low on the mana, but a few seconds with that Bloodstone, and he should be back in a good place. A 70 without G. Yule set up into the ice path. A low on us in a whole world of pain. Reaper Scythe comes in, doesn't get the initial kill, but it does get the kill nonetheless. Doesn't matter because buyback is there. A low on us goes straight back in, but they've lost another. Buyback from the IO. Vega throwing everything in for this last defense. They've got the three man dream call. Do they have the follow up? A low on us looking towards Crystallize, but Navi just stand their ground. Take down the tier three. BKB out on a low on us, but he's still taking is so much right click from Dendi. Dendi, life strike onto Slayer. Dendi gets the double kill. Dendi, you take down another. They're all dead apart from this Zayakayo, and he is the last to pop. Oh my god. Yeah, it honestly. was not a triumph. He won't be making a note. This was not a great success. <laughs> Vega are out in this series. 2 0. Navi. Dendi. Dendi as well. He's, I don't know what he's, you know, been drinking or eating, but he's on some good stuff. This he was. went absolutely berserk this game. Roger is 